Box Mining live stream here on Box Mining here in Hong Kong. So, guys, this episode is uh, it, it was because I screwed up the timetable. So, uh, for some reason, all right, guys, um, I accidentally put it as Thursday for the live stream. I didn't know until people were telling me on a Telegram channel box, are you coming on today? And there's like 50 people waiting. I'm like, Anyways, guys, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick recap. I, I, I was thinking on the way here, like what, what sort of material to cover? I'll cover a little bit about what I've been up to this week as well. So as you guys know, all right, so this is going to be a much less formal stream than normal. All right, because we basically I totally mess up the scheduling. You'll still be in another stream tomorrow. So this is just going to be an extra bonus stream on top. Uh, so in normal schedule is on Friday. All right, and I'll, I'll detail a little bit about what I do throughout the week and what I'm kind of preparing for and what I'm kind of working on this week. This week has been relatively busy. Uh, I think I've been having uh, a lot of management. Um, so people are wondering like, oh, if Box not making videos, well, what am I doing like half my time? So I'll kind of fill you guys in on a little bit of that, just kind of what I'm doing. And also I'll do a little bit of a market recap and a farming recap. So just in quick summary, I mean, this week, the, the markets haven't moved too much, right? Um, it's pretty, you know, we're, we're entering exciting times potentially. So, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum were both up pretty much since we last talked about them. It's not not overly interesting. CoinGecko did get um, DDoS yesterday. So yesterday we had an unhappy smiley face on CoinGecko. But overall, we're still above 11K for Bitcoin. We're still kind of trying, Ethereum's still trying to touch 4,000. It's, it's still trying to get there. Still not for 4,400. So Eve is trying to push to 400. It still hasn't touched there yet. So we're kind of all waiting to see what happens next. Are we going to kind of stay here for a while? And there's a lot of momentum moving up, especially from the China side. This is where, in terms of new information, right, China has been turning more and more bullish towards Bitcoin and Ethereum. There's a lot of pressure there. And obviously, with elections coming up in the States, this kind of period of uncertainty is not, it also affects the whole cryptocurrency space. So anyways, obviously it's not financial advice. But in terms of China, it gets quite interesting because as you guys know, they're rolling out the digital currency electronic payment, DCEP. And a lot of people have been saying that this could be one of the biggest factors to push crypto adoption. If you really look at the long-term view of it, right? Um, China has always been kind of, it's been interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll put up to the whiteboard here. So China 20, 2017, they said ban Bitcoin. I'll put it in big red, actually. Uh, ban Bitcoin, no exchange. I'll put my mic over here a little bit as well. So they really hated Bitcoin back then. Boom, boom, no, no, no. But in 2019-ish, they, they really came out and said, you know, blockchain. Blockchain good. Uh, Bitcoin bad, right? That that was the the message. So they really don't like anything to do with ICOs. I mean, they flat out banned ICOs. They were kind of sh putting shade on Bitcoin on Ethereum. They just really didn't like it. They're, they they acknowledged the fact that you know blockchain is good, but they never really touched upon ETH, and they never touched upon. Bitcoin on a mass media scale, but this year it's changed. So this is late. This is like mid 2020 until now. So which is now kind of entering this October area. Now they're actually saying, you know what? Um, ETH is good, you know, uh, which is a very interesting topic. And this is really related to the deployment DCEP, which is their digital currency electronic payment system. So if you actually go on to the website there, so this is actually in use right now. So this is a video of people using digital currency electronic payment. So this is their new digital currency that's <laughs> that's going to be based on, well, not going to be. It is actually based a lot on blockchain technology. It's issued by the central bank, so the People's Bank of China. So it's 100% it's digital. 
which is very interesting. So previously, you know, you probably saw some of these videos where people pay via QR code, etc. That was via Alipay or by WeChat Pay. These are kind of like PayPal's. They kind of take possession, the, the possession of that currency, and it's not real digital currency. But here, what this guy is spending on is he's actually spending with DCEP, which isn't actually a digital currency. It's digital currency. So this is a huge change in what's happening in China. And this year, right, there's rumors that there is a much more positive sentiment in China. So this is where China is becoming a lot more bullish than they have. So on the news, I mean, we've been seeing that over the past few days. On the news, there was talk of, you know, Ethereum being one of the top assets. Now, if I talk to any of my Chinese friends in China, previously I talked, oh, you know, I'm in Bitcoin, Ethereum, blockchain. They're like, oh are you selling radios that's really cool you know like technology right it's like some products you know is, is it like the new you know i don't know, like they, they have this code confused idea of blockchain but now they know exactly what it is because it's on mainstream media right so the moment i see talk about if oh my god it's the best performing asset of 2020 i saw it on cctv right so it, it's a very big difference it's like a whole mentality shift of what's going on and obviously this is very interesting so I mean, I saw CZ tweet about this too, uh, where, you know, there's this rumor. I, I'll, let me see if I can still find the tweet. So this is just from a few days ago, but um, it's talking about in China, there is this rumor now going on that exchanges might be allowed back in. That's going to be pretty huge. Um, so this was coming out. This was like, okay, uh, we like to... Uh, we, we, we will likely have the two of the world's most pres powerful presidents pump crypto for us in two consecutive days. Rumor has it that blockchain-related announcement is coming out of China tomorrow. So basically today, very soon, very soon. Well, kind of, in these few days. And the rumors are, all right, um, it depends on which rumors you try to subscribe to. The, one of the rumors is that exchanges will be allowed back into China again, which would be very, very interesting because for the longest time, there wasn't a very good on-ramp, you know, because I said, like I said, it it is true that exchanges are banned, right? And what they have been doing is that exchanges have been secretly operating OTC over the counter, right? But if the exchanges are allowed back again, you know, in the late period of 2020, that could be a massive, massive boost to crypto. So anyways, that's why I'm eyeing everything here. And that's why it's happening. In terms of solid announcements, yes, DCEP. In terms of what China is doing right now, so they have the digital currency electronic payment. They actually have a, issued out a lottery, right? So this is essentially an airdrop, right? So they're going to airdrop this to people in Shenzhen. So if you're a Shenzhen resident, you can sign up to get a DCEP airdrop. So try to learn how to use DCEP. And I've always said that this is a big bridge because DCEP is more digital currency than Alipay, WeChat Pay. It's, it's essentially based kind of on blockchain technology, but made in a more centralized fashion. Well, kind of based on Bitcoin, it got, got UTXO model, et cetera, but it's more centralized than that. So that kind of the transition to a more digital currency state is going to be very powerful. All right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, about live laces. DCEP today, tomorrow, the world. It's actually going to be very interesting as well because depending on how DCEP is going to be used and widely adopted, I mean, the fact that right now it is being adopted surprised me quite a bit because China has been very, very tight on how currency is moved, right? So this has been going on for a long time and yeah, like being more international. This is where I appeared on, you know, when I, remember when I appeared on Phoenix TV to talk about DCEP and stuff? That I was like, there was a lot of speculation, right, uh, over how widely distributed it is, and the distribution of it's been surprisingly fast. So that's gonna be crazy. Um, all right, Michael, Michael, Michael. Let's follow up on chat. Uh, we got Angela Wang says uh, the lecture board is back. I'm I'm trying to make more use of it. I mean, it seems cool, right? I mean, this this whole board, and I've got I've got this like um, this pseudo green screen going on. I don't know. I've, I've, I'm just trying to use more of the web again, but I'm a lot more yellow here. Did you guys notice that? Like I'm here, I'm look kind of normal, but on here I'm very yellow, like orange, orange. It's like I, I ate too many carrots or something like that. So, anyways, so um, let's see. What are your questions? So prior to this, all right, prior to starting today's stream, people 
uh, we're asking about a few things. A thing, uh, one, one is farming. So what, what am I yield farming? Uh, farms, oops, that didn't work. Farms, uh, and why did I change background? That's pretty cool. I did not know how to change background here. Okay, farms, number one. Uh, what, what, um, what I kind of do, I kind of, I kind of found like that was kind of do um daily, daily schedule. If I can spell, um, obviously I'm not a, I can no longer write. Being in the digital age, it's um, I, I have lost the ability to write words on paper. And uh, let's see, farms that, and then maybe uh, recent recent investments and investments investments. All right, so number one, let's start with farms. Uh, and if you guys have anything, I'll throw this on the list of stuff to do as well. Um. <laughs> uh. All right. Uh, okay, so farms number one. What? What did I, did I just lose this? Oh no, it's gone. It's gone. I'm horrific at losing this. So chat, do tell me if. How did I lose this? Weird. Weird, 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 weird. Oh, no, no, it's here, it's here, it's here. Okay, okay. All right, okay, that's okay. That's okay. We're still good. We're still good. We're still good. All right, starting off with number one of farms. So recently, I haven't been farming aggressively as I have. Um, because back in the day, right? Back in the day, it was... I'll just do a little bit of math for you guys. So back in the day when I was farming, you had very good farms. Right? Let's say, say for something like ETH or USD or BTC, or like WB Ren or WBTC, or any of the kind of coins, the main core currencies, right? So for these currencies, back in the day, you'll have like 600% to 2,000%, which means that on a daily basis, my grading from a 600 to a 2,000% farm is worth it because you're really getting um 1400% 1, more APY, right? So it, it made more sense to switch and doing that switch means that you can get thousands of dollars more. Um at least with the amount that I'm farming, right? So this is kind of back in the day. This is around around 1 month ago. But now that now it's really changed. Now like for for the stable coin farms or for Bitcoin farms or whatnot, um, the situation is very different. You're really getting roughly 30% to 70%. Um, this is what kind of like for, for the more stable ones at least. All right. I mean, there there are rumors of this like kind of one thousand percent to six one thousand percent to six um let's say let's say six hundred percent to one thousand percent. But a lot of these turn out to be scams. So they actually just steal your coins. So there's actually no point in trying to move to these because they're mostly scams or they just last one or two hours. Um that's that's kind of my two cents, right? Not financial advice. But like um I personally saw a lot of these scams pop up and then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna completely disregard it. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna focus on this. So, so recently, um, I had a good farm uh, that I couldn't share. Unfortunately, I was sworn into secrecy. It's like you know, blood pack cannot tell anyone else um, into secrecy. It was offering around seventy to around two hundred percent APY that I couldn't tell. But now that has that farm is most mostly done as well. So we're kind of at this point where. You're, I'm kind of like here. I'm okay. Look, 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 look. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I'm roughly around here for APY. So I'm getting around 50% APY annual percentage yield for my stuff. Um, it's still a bit. I mean, it's still it's still money, but I'm not aggressively looking for new farms, especially with how much like how many rug pulls there are. We in fact made a huge list of rug pulls as well this month. So that's kind of the general trend of what I'm doing. Like I'm, I'm no longer aggressively looking into every single farm and, you know, just Dracula. I heard of Dracula, I heard, I heard of snow swab. I, I'm still in pancake. Um, but in terms of the, my, my, my main, main, main farming portfolio, my, my, my war chest, right? In terms of my war chest, my war chest is gaining somewhere around here. So this is for my war chest. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's it. It's unfortunate, right? Um, I do have like kind of these splinters off, like um, these smaller, like you know, speculative. Let's let's call it spec farming, speculative farmings, which I'm in a few pools. Like for example, Lua. Lua was one of those ones that I was in. 
Uh, I'll just guys show you guys Lua. But Lua, um, the Lua swap, um, the APY decreased drastically this week as well. Yet again, that's where <laughs> hasn't been a great week for farming. Let's be honest. So Lua, um, this is their APY. On Tomo Eve, I, I told you guys about this very, very early. You can set up this crazy farming kind of uh, situation where you're not exposed as much to Tomo. So this is something I was talking about earlier where you, for this one, the, the old APY was around 6,000%. 2,000 to 6,000% on this farm because of the increased rewards, right? Now, not so much. So anyway, so back in the day, back in the day, you know, back in the day, let's talk about the past. But back in the day, it was very profitable to set up a short on FTX. So you short the asset and then you farm with it. So you effectively hold none of the asset and then you can farm and enjoy a high APY. So yeah, that was one of the farms. Now it's not nearly as good. It's like 200, you know, 260%. But you have to remember that this 268% is um, partially unlocked. So it's like the way that they do it is they have a locked portion that they give to you around 25% and then a 75%, which is unlocked, which anyway, so I did a lot of math on this. I'm like, okay, I just took apart two farms on Lua just so I you know, I can manage my funds a little bit better. So, yeah. So I'm also in YFE. People are asking me YFE, um, YFE. I'm also in Cream still. And this is something I talk about. Cream, cream swag is what I'm in, what, what I'm in right now. Um, let's see what else I'm in. Um, still farm, harvest farm. I'm uh, small, small amounts, small amounts. I'm here. Um, what else is there? Uni uni um yeah that's pretty much off the top of my head so oh yeah pancake 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 is a big one pan and cake so my entry point for pancake was around 70 cents 17 cents 70 cents and then i've been in that for like a um, like a few weeks already so let me just go very quickly so pancake swap is the bsc version of this uh, but it's been pretty volatile it's been pretty good um, I've been managing a lot of farms and this is why, um, this is how I spend most of my time. Um, unfortunately just clicking buttons and moving money around. So I still do a lot of that. This, this actually takes around, uh, around roughly two hours of my time each day. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's still, you know, it's like a lot of times they looking at new farms and they say no i don't want to go into it um i still manage like um uh, like kind of transitioning like anything that's anytime like say for example swerve was uh what was um a farm i took apart and then you have to take that apart take the funds out dump it in something else it's a it's a very big pain in the ass um it takes a lot of time you like this is one thing i don't want to do as much every day um it's profitable it makes money right because all of these like they just generate passive income right they they just you position yourself there you get an annual percentage yield and that yield is way better than what the bank offers me right if you think about it the bank offers me like point uh point five percent or less in fact like sometimes they advertise point four percent right so like versus the bank like holy crap right this is much 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 better but of course um it requires a bit of management and it's not always passive income. It's like there's an active component to try to get the best yields and migrate to better pools. Um, but it feels very unproductive. I think that's the one thing. It feels like for me, like I constantly want to build something. Like I'm, I feel like I need to provide value to the ecosystem. That That's my criteria for anything I try to do, right? Does it add value? Am I like increasing or teaching someone something? Or is it that I'm building something or building a team or getting something? But this is just pure like clicking buttons and making money. But you know, I can't complain, okay? First world, first, first world crypto problems, I can't really complain on that. You know, at the end of the day, I'm making money, right? Um, quite, a good, quite good money too, like enough to spend. Um, so yeah, so this week I've been also spending. Um, I, just, I just got really tired. I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna spend my some money. Um, so yeah, bought the Oculus Quest 2, uh, bought some new shoes, bought, you know, rev relatively cheap stuff still. Still waiting on the iPhone. Um, and this is something that I've also been kind of thinking about 
quite a lot as well. Because like you know, when, when you're when you're tired, you want to spend money, right? You want to spend money to make yourself happy, right? But you don't want to incur any liabilities. Uh, that's that's the that's the one I don't want. Like. I know a lot of people, they just go out and buy a car. I still have not bought a car. Like Hong Kong has very good tr public transport. It has great um, a transportation network. Like if you really wanted to get somewhere fast, you can just hire a taxi. It's not expensive. Um, and the public transportation is great, right? So like I'm, I'm still one of those cheap passes that's just like I still take public transportation. Like I could buy a like one of the top cars, whatever, right? Um, I looked at it. I looked at used cars and I'm like, you know what? I still don't want to incur liabilities at this point. Um, that's just for me, right? For my, my own planning and for my own sake. Like the less liabilities I have, the better and the more I can aggressively invest into projects at this current point. So, you know. Yeah, Michael Liu was saying Prime Day, it wasn't impressive. Nah, not impressive at all. Like, what was there? Like at max, there was AirPods at half price. And I was like, it's like, you know, AirPods Pro. Yeah, I was like, Apple might come up with new ones soon too, right? So yeah, shopping this 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 season was not too good. I bought some new Sunnies though, um, and probably pretty much that's it. Um, yeah, that's yeah. Kaido says WTF box doesn't even have a car. Yeah, exactly, man. That's um that's how cheap I am. Um, you guys know I'm actually really really cheap. Um, like yeah. Like on crypto side, I think, I think like with the amount of gas I burnt, um, I can buy a car. <laughs> um, like I burnt so much gas farming, it's ridiculous, right? But I still have not pulled the trigger on um, a car at this point. Uh, yeah. So other than that, yeah, maybe the, the most thing I invested this, okay, not invested, bought, all right, it's just stupid watches. So like I bought this watch, um, yeah, like watches kind of like, I kind of justify in a sense that like they can keep or maintain value. Like if you buy a Rolex and you get in a good sports model, um, they retain value quite well. Um, but yeah, not Grand Seiko still. So this one, this one's a Grand Seiko, and they don't retain value very well. But you know, that's that's pretty much it. Um, Angela Wang says, "Don't know the richest people are the cheapest. The problem is cars are liabilities. They you, you have to burn gas, and Hong Kong you have to buy extra parking space, and everywhere you go, it it works out to be a lot more expensive. Like you're you're paying, you're you're just adding a lot of liabilities to your life. It's it's just not." really worth it um you know um i was looking at teslas though i was like you know what if i want a first car i want to buy a tesla um but you know they don't didn't i did not pull the trigger maybe, maybe when like maybe when like more moon comes I'll, I'll buy one just for fun but you know um that's pretty much it so anyways so what's next let's see um decreasing liabilities that's been a uh, core focus let's see uh daily schedule so this is kind of interesting, right? Uh, I want to talk to you about this because like um, kind of affects what I'm trying to do. Um, why is my computer so slow? This is so weird. Um, you know, nothing moves right now. So I think it's this Windows or something. This is okay. I'm, I'm back. It's back. It's back. All right, there we go. So daily schedule. So kind of wake up. So recently, all right, I, I, I don't know this is going to be the, either the best or the most boring topic. So recently I'm waking up at 10 a.m., all right, uh, 9 to 10. Um, just staying up really late, all right? So so I'm not lazy. I'm not lazy. <laughs> I'm just like staying up really late. So this is when morning I do have a call slot. Um, so either it's either a call or a stream. So this is where I can call a project or I can call someone to figure out what's going on. And I've been more recently moving more towards an investment site. I've been a lot more aggressively investing um, this whole crypto season. Um, it's just kind of the case where if I can find a good project, I want to build up assets, right? Um, you know, that's that's kind of the key thing for me. So it's a key focus for me to build up assets and reduce liabilities. Yes, I just watched a video on Rich Dad Poor Dad yesterday. So I'm like, I'm using this phrase, so it, it sounds cool, okay? But anyway, so that's that's usually the cost slot. Um, recently, just for an example, who did I call? So I had calls with Reef. 
um injective they're the new Bi binance io inje injective um i have calls with swag uh, we'll talk about that soon swag is going to get its own topic um had toss of fuse um and let's see who else um dow maker is kind of interesting dow maker so yeah like a lot of um rev as well um uh, hacken um uh, because i'm an advisor there player uh these add up to a lot um so roughly speaking these take roughly like 30 to 40 min for a call and people just try to call me and not everything works out very well like sometimes i really don't like a project um sometimes it's just not for me i'm not gonna name any names maybe like maybe a certain um project like <laughs> and i'm not gonna name any names but a lot of calls um just to figure out what's going on and what's happening etc um i also do team calls now like um i'm trying to expand the box mining team so recently uh box mining is undergoing um mining if i can actually spell my name properly dot com that's going for website reamp so that's kind of what's happening website reamp um also we're trying to get more writers on and we're trying to add more people so just yeah generally there it takes but primarily a lot of my time then we go for lunch obviously 1 a.m 1 p.m lunch lunch food um uh, yeah and then we go straight to kind of like another call session sometimes videos video so vid uh yo slash farm Probably here we got farm session too. So this is where I look at new farms, I look at what's happening, etc. Um, then uh, dinner, not very interesting guy. Uh, then we kind of figure out, okay, later towards here, this is like where recently I've been just like rest. All right. Um, like previously, this would be another session for calls, but recently I've been pushing more for rest. So I've been watching a lot of like TV recently, um, Bly Manor. Uh, you guys watch that? Um, Haunting of Bly Manor. Um, that was pretty cool. Uh, and Nola Holmes was pretty good. So I'm just like Netflix. It's just Netflix. It's right. Netflix. Net, net, Netflix. All right. There you go. And then, and then probably like sleep really late because I sleep around 2, 2 to 3 a.m. Boom. All right. My schedule done. Try to make it as interesting as possible. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, uh, Julio says, are, are spelling lessons to get your name right a liability? Man, you know what? I haven't written, like, I haven't handwritten anything for a long time. Um, it's so weird. And writing with this pen is weird. So that's my excuse, all right? But I will practice. I will practice as an asset. As an asset. To be able to write on a, on a whiteboard is an asset. Um, uh, Alcoins, when you agree to do a video, doesn't mean you like to batch. Absolutely. I uh, usually, when you know, when I do a video or interview, usually it's after talking to them and figuring out what the hell they're doing. I do make a lot of altcoin investments. Um, yeah, like, like I looked at it, like I looked at a sheet of all the altcoins I hold. Um, recently I've been building up because recently we we're having a, like a little bit slower period when it's time to actually build up a list of altcoins, a list of investments, and just going through your wallets and figuring out what I have. A lot of deployed capital, a lot, like yeah, like quite a lot, quite a lot um it's good it's good like been doing really well actually um like a lot of this is like paper gain still like but the whole space has been very very good for me um like beyond what i would have thought would have thought like you know a lot of, it made a lot of it made living life very trivial it kind of very interesting um like you go out you go and spend money and you're like ah oh, that's like ethereum gas fees for today you know like it's you know not like that's kind of messed up right like 
Now, there were periods of time, you know, when farming was going well. Yeah, you try to spend money, and there's like no way you can spend that. Like I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put today's farm gains towards spending like outside, and I'm like just adding up. Like there's just no way I can spend that much money without buying something extremely luxurious or extremely powerful. Like there was just like you buy normal items every day, and it's like it just seems trivial right now. Um, yeah, like it's it's such a weird feeling because like, you know, before my income wasn't very high, you know, like back in 2015, 2014, I was working towards equity, you know, blood and sweat and tears towards equity, towards a company. Um, but the, the effective income was not very high at all. But nowadays, it's just kind of insane just to think about, you know, my passive income being at the point at which I can't even spend it, you know, like. That's kind of crazy, right? Humble brag. Humble, I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning humble brags. You know, I'm learning humble brags from. I've been watching um, this, this guy's toast a lot, and he's like the king of humble brags, right? So I'm like, yeah, realistically, humble brags is great. Um, but, you know, crypto's been great. Um, recently, okay, so recent big investment, the biggest, biggest investment that I made, obviously, if you guys have been on my Telegram group, um, is swag. So, uh, this is harder to talk about on YouTube. Um, you guys probably will know that I'm a lot more open on my Telegram channel versus the YouTube channel, mostly because swag has to do with adult entertainment. Uh, so, you know, you, you if you're not over 18, please, yet again, please do leave this conversation. I think it's a situation where you can't really talk about this without, you know, like if I if you go search for that stuff, you're gonna hit adult content really fast, right? So, oh, um, so so why so why so this has been something that I've um, known about for a while, um, you know, being um, in the space. Um, it's a Taiwan project, TW project. I'm quite close to the Taiwan blockchain groups. Um, it's related slightly to Cream, uh, related a little bit to everything else that's going on, but. Um, it was interesting because um, we offhandedly mentioned swag and people, they were looking for ideas, right? I'm like, okay, for adult entertainment, you know, I was like giving some ideas and I'm like, you guys can think of some like NFT stuff and DAO and governance and everything. Um, so that was one of the calls I had and I did get an investment opportunity at 10 cents, right? Um, so this is the community round. This is at the um, coin issuance round as well. So I went in pretty big. That was like one of the bigger investments I made this week. I'll be more open with these stuff. Um, and one of the biggest reasons why is because of the speed at their growth, right? Uh, this really just took off like it was like hockey stick up, right? In terms of what they can do um, in terms of the platform itself. It's it's like the best way to describe it is like kind of like an Asian OnlyFans. Uh, but Asia is like a very interesting space, right? Because a lot of regions, they don't allow adult content. And Japan has censored adult content. This is like uncensored Asian adult content. So, uh, you know, go figure. So they managed to find a way to make it work. And um, they just grew. They just blew up. Blew up. So... That's why I kind of got into swag. It's the token itself is for DAO, for DAO governance. And then there is this talk about kind of splitting, right? Uh, Non-contractual, so it's not, you know, on any form of contract, but like they're splitting some form of distribution of the platform. So this is where it could be, you know, like they're, they're bordering lining this, like this mysterious area of, okay, can, can they push, how far can they push DAO governance? Right. Um, that's interesting. But anyway, so, so that was my biggest kind of um, investment. Um, spent the weekend thinking about it. It's one of the the ones where I actually have to spend some time to think about, you know, how how aggressively do I want to go into something like this? And do I want to cover this on my channel? Um, reception was crazy. Um, like I mentioned it and people went crazy on Telegram to do research on this. I, I guess that's why. But anyways, people nonstop talked about it for two days on <laughs> Telegram chat. So I think it's somewhere. But anyways, it launched yesterday. Um, it's sitting around, I think it's at 20 cents right now. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm at a healthy 2x. But of course, tokens are locked. So I have 20% unlocked and then the rest are locked. So 
that's kind of the situation I'm at right now. So that's where um, did I? Uh, that's where I'm at. So basically, I took my swag and I put it with my cream, and we're farming the cream swag pool right now. That's that's kind of the current strategy. I'm taking this as a more long term play. Um, like with the speed at which they're going, I think it's good. Like I'm just gonna eyeball their speed at which they develop and progress and. Yeah, that's 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 my story. That's my that's my week story. So yeah. Um, uh, we got. I think it's like kind of interesting. Also, like you know, a lot of people were looking at kind of where it's gonna go, and I think it didn't it didn't moon at launch, which is I think a kind of a good thing. Um, if it w moon crazy at launch, I think it would have been very hard for people to anyone else to enter, and then that's kind of bad, right? Anyways, my two cents. Okay, so AP asks a question. Hey, Michael, any thoughts on Andre releasing code to make stake some staking more universal? Tokens like DFT already have this in place. Want to see if this is a place or we need this for a future um uh, in today's crypto world that's just a really good question by the way thank you so much for a donation too so a few things and a few thoughts about andre first of all so i'm um, uh, you know andre is interesting um this week i followed a drama in a situation where um uh, andre is kind of like the the king of DeFi, right so andre right here andre if i can spell um Crone. So first of all, he's the king. He's kind of like the king of DeFi, but he tests in production, right? Uh, in prod. So two things that kind of went crazy. So EMN, Eminence, and his game. And he, he released another one. I forgot his name tempor uh, temporarily this week. But like he released some code. He didn't even talk about it. Um, and then boom, it shot up in price and I got dumped in price so just be very careful of anything he knew he's developing i think a lot of people um they're uh, they're almost primed to jump in whatever he does like he deploys a contract everyone just buys a coin update they, they don't even know what it is um and then they buy it up and then they, they lose a lot of money so um that's been a current trend and that's why i haven't been aggressively following andre for a while so i i have been talking to him previously like previously when i was like looking and researching wifey i did talk to him and uh, he's busy af and hopefully we can get him on a channel very soon but that's the kind of situation i don't follow everything he does Talking about more staking and uh, farming, so we have quite a few projects that are trying to do this, and I think um, staking and farming becomes one of the big primary drivers of decentralized finance, right? Because people have a lot of money, right? It just turns out that crypto, there's a lot of billionaires out there. Um, like that's why I'm like I'm like nothing compared to these guys, right? The the guys who have a ton of money, but they don't know where to spend it. So in that sense. If we can find a way to deploy capital very quickly, then pew, 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 right? Being able to have this on cross platforms. And that's that's kind of what we we're talking about yesterday with Reef. Reef is also trying to do that as well. So being able to just like deploy money everywhere, like, and, and then make use of it, um, creating more value. I think that's great. So that's my kind of two cents. And that's kind of where DeFi is moving overall, right? Uh, it's kind of weird because like, how do I say this? Like, one thing I found out, right, was just how ridiculously rich people were. Like, that's kind of like the, the biggest discovery in crypto. Like, um, I was on the, I'm going to draw a boat here. So uh, there, there was a crypto cruise, right? Um, to cruise. And it was just packed with rich billionaires. Like, like, I didn't know know how the rich the, the the super the one percent behave right and it's just crazy right like like you watch tenant and you're like oh like most of the people on that cruise are are, are like that guy in tenant um and then within that one percent there is another one percent the one percent of the one percent contain hold most of the world's wealth um, and that 1% of the 1% needs to find a way to deploy capital. And I think this is a great way for them to do so. But unfortunately, you know, it's like another, 
that's another mine. Like, uh, it's the most unfair distribution of wealth in the world. And I had, I struggled a long time, like, after I was on the cruise, right? And I didn't really talk about this that much. I just kind of struggled to understand this, right? Like, you know, how can this world be so messed up where, you know, these ultra rich are so ultra rich, right? And you hear these stories of how they got there, right? When, like, the, the, the USSR broke up. You know, some of them just like hired a bunch of people and then took over oil fields and everything, right? It's kind of ridiculous. Like these are, these are crazy stories, but it's true, right? Like these guys are powerful and rich because of um, some crazy stuff they did back in the past. Um, some of them barely legal, right? So anyways, I struggled with that for a long time. It was actually quite depressing, to be honest. Um but it made me understand the world a lot better. Like it, it kind of made me understand like how the world works a lot better. Like and kind of how unfair it is, but at the same time it makes logical sense. But anyways, that's that's my that's my long thinking story of everything. I think that's today's been more thinking episode. Um a lot more about a thinking episode about what's happening um so yeah so let's check up on chat so anyways I, I think that's gonna be powerful i think i think like the this uber rich they haven't really jumped into crypto that much like there's a small segment of the uber rich that jumped into crypto but the rest are still kind of very conservative right they still trade art um you know that's that's the main primary way they have a store of value for art meme vases and you know expensive alcohol expensive um uh, cigars, etc. That's kind of how the Uber rich works right now. But eventually, you can kind of see that kind of change into crypto, and that's that's kind of the state that we're at in terms of the the higher up game, supposedly. Yeah. All right. So I think that's pretty much it for today. I definitely appreciate you guys sticking around. Um, it's definitely a very different episode. We also got Crypto Graham. It's now a good time to talk about Filecoin. For funny story of Filecoin, like we've been trying to figure out what's happening, right? And uh, so as a team, like we want to catch the Filecoin word, right? So strategically for boxmining.com, you want to have much as much coverage as possible because that's kind of like the new hype, right? It's like kind of getting polka dot early, right? So we've been trying to research as much content as possible for Filecoin, but surprisingly, there isn't much. Very interesting. Um, like I don't know, they need to hire. They need to hire more people communicating or something. It's kind of crazy, um, but you know, yeah, it's pretty f much that. Uh, we got a good question uh, from uh, to Sar to Sarau says, "Hi, Michael. Please share your thoughts about MXC exchange. Can we stake our funds in that exchange into Yield Pool, Tron Pool, ETC?" Um, yeah, so. You can, obviously, but I don't trust it. Um, I've got a bad run with exchanges in the past. Um, I don't trust, like I use MXC, but the max amount I stick on MXC, I'm gonna reveal numbers here, I know it's not good, but the max amount I ever stick on MXC is around 10K. So anything more than 10K, I try to move on ASAP. Like that's that's the, the same policy goes with any um, of the exchanges. Like um yeah 10k is kind of my speculative limit um like if i need to go there and trade i will um but yeah so around 10k or less is what i've stayed i'll i'll be comfortable putting on mxc uh probably even less like right now because i'm actively trading on there because there's a few assets on mxc that i actively trade um that limits higher but the moment the trading season is over i'll cut that down to zero um it's just a way because like in the past you know with with how um uh, how Mt. Gox played out you know i lost money on exchanges before um in fact like not just Mt. Gox, there's another exchange that was horrific uh hit btc hit btc actually froze all my funds and asked for like a million kyc requirements um sometimes it happens with these exchanges like sometimes you can withdraw fine until you put anything more than 50k on and then once you hit 50k they're like okay kyc 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 and um so yeah it's like it was a nightmare and the way the, their support works is that they don't answer you so it's like one month like there was nothing like 
you send your docs, you wait a, like literally one or two weeks, not maybe not a month. My month is exaggerating. One or two weeks, they'll send you a reply for more documents. I'll have a utility bill, have this. The whole ordeal took around three months for me to take money out of um, HitBTC and I'll never touch that exchange again. So I'll put MXC into like, you know, uh, the, the ones I don't trust that much category. Um, so yeah, that's my two cents. Um, you know, you can farm, but I trust holding my coins, um, my own coins a lot more. Like that's just the way it is. Um, like I, right, right now I actively use Binance a lot. Um, I actively use FTX a lot. Um, a huge, huge use of FTX because I have free withdrawals, right? So with free withdrawals, um, then I, I'm using that as a wallet. Um, so yeah, you know. Particle says prediction for BDC, please. I think head and shoulders pattern in four hours. Please need advice. I don't trade as like... The funny thing about me is like I've been doing whatever is very profitable for me. Like I don't aggressively trade BTC on leverage. I know some people do trade that like um, super aggressively on leverage. Um, not so much. Like for me, I kind of eyeball it. Um, that's just kind of strategy. I'm not going to give any advice on that. Um, I, I just don't feel like... It would like it is profitable. Don't get me wrong, and I have made some really good plays, but that's only when I'm like extremely confident about what's happening. Like now, it's not a time when I'm like super confident. I think I can swing both ways. There's a lot of volatility as well, especially with politics. So my overall exposure to leverage trading on Bitcoin and Ethereum is not very high. Um, yeah, that's just just the case. I'm much better at finding and spotting good projects and talking and figuring out who's BSing or not uh during calls a lot of times i kind of filter that out already like i've told you guys about you know um i actually really enjoy watching something like among us videos where you know you're, you're just trying to spot the imposter you're going to try to spot the liar that's actually a very important skill to have in crypto because most project leaders um or ceos like there's a lot of kind of like bs they try to spot and um, I do much better with like kind of the altcoin portfolio and kind of sensing where projects can go in the long run. That's where I'm at. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of where it is. I think the biggest tip I will say is like, and I facepalm every time people say this, right? Um, it's like, it's like playing founders bingo. Every time you talk to some sort of founder, they're like, okay, first of all, if they say they're a real business with real profits and that everyone else is fake, that's like a big red flag. Um, I don't know why people do this. I mean, sure, you can have a real business, but a lot of other businesses are real. So putting other people down and putting them up is like one of the worst things they can do, right? Uh, if you don't acknowledge what's been done in this space and you just call everything else a scam, especially if you look at what's happening with the yield farm and DeFi scene, that just shows a complete ignorance of what they're doing in the DeFi scene, right? What's happening in DeFi and what's happening um, around there. Uh, I think the other one, uh, the other red flag I would say is with tech. Um, and it's a trick that I kind of do in my interviews too. Um, if you see this, where you 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 ask them a topic about a topic about how maybe blockchain works or how their protocol is different, and you keep asking deeper and deeper and deeper, even though you might not fully understand what they're talking about. Like most of the time, you try to be like. You try to ask them about the blockchain design. You try to ask about how the transactions are going. And then you try to ask them about how they're different. And then you try to ask them very much in detail how the node functions. And then you go a little bit deeper. So the deeper they go, the more they understand, the more legit they are, right? And it's kind of funny. It's a, it's, this is a classic interview trick where you kind of keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. But you also provide enough intelligence to convince them that you know exactly what they're talking about right like you know obviously i'm not i'm not on, on, on omnipotent but i know enough about blockchain to to ask deep enough questions and keep going to a deep enough level so then you can call out on the bs right once they start kind of like fumbling you kind of know how much skill this guy has right you only need to do it just once or twice and then you kind of figure out roughly how much this guy knows about tech where this guy's at and what sort of personality this guy's at 
So that's kind of my strategy. And it works pretty well. Like this is the standard interview technique, right? Like I learned this from interviewing people, like whether it's programmers, whether it's artists, whether it's um, like back in the gaming company, I set it up, right? Marketers or operations people. Like you just ask one topic in very much detail. You learn a bit on the process, but also you get, it's a best BS detector. It is the best BS detector in the world. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Um, uh, John Teal says your hair looks messy today. Time for a haircut. Absolutely. It's a, it's a big mess, right? Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Like it doesn't behave like even in the morning, like it's not behaving very well. It's definitely not behaving very well. Um, definitely time for a haircut. Um, it's getting very long. Like, I think like the, the longest length is like here. Like I'm always down here. Um, yeah. That's pretty much where it is at. That's Creek Pool. We have 300 people listening to me talking about myself. Congrats, guys. Awesome. I feel so good. Uh, <laughs> Crypto Graham says box mining is sus. Huh. We got to do a gaming session, guys. Um, I'm going to put out the, the Discord channel. I, I've been meaning to do this for ages, but... Um, like I haven't played video games. I'm just watching people play video games recently, but I want to have a session where we we'll all just play like Among Us or play Fall Guys or something like that. It'll be super fun. Um, let me just get the invite up for, for anyone, anyone, any gamers here, definitely come, come on board. Uh, you know, this week was just too busy. It was just like a lot and a lot of research into everything that's going on. Um, it was crazy. It's crazy. Like the amount of research I did for swag was insane. Research, research. No, 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 no. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> 40 month star says, fair doesn't matter when you're rich. Look at Trump. <laughs> not that rich yet. Not that rich. Soon, 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 soon. This is, uh, this is where, yeah, I'm being so aggressive. Um, Angela Wang says, hit the like so he can talk more about himself. I'm, I'm surprised people didn't leave. I, I was like, you know, like I took a risk. I was like, you know what? Let me talk about non-crypto and just to do a little bit about my experiences and life and my views. And it, yeah, people it actually like, I'm actually looking at concurrent viewers and it's actually increasing. So that's cool. Thanks guys. Thanks guys for listening. Um, yeah. Um, I'm also dreaming about food too. Everyone's talking about food. Um, yeah. I recently went on intermittent fasting. It is brutal um yeah and i'm still not losing weight because i'm overcompensating by eating during the the eating session so anyways anyways and people are asking about um passive income like do look at mines like all right if you guys want like the easiest way if you guys want to learn about mining unfortunately is with something like uh let me just see this um uh, pancake swap is actually pretty good with that um yeah like I don't know. Like, it's so much cheaper to play on Binance Smart Chain if you guys want to learn. Like, I'll do a tutorial. I've been meaning to do a Binance Smart Chain tutorial for a while. And I'll, like, if you guys are interested, definitely request one for like Pancake Swap or something. Like, because it's so cheap to interact with it, right? Like, on Ethereum, when you're trying to set up a mine, um, it costs around four or five dollars for every action that you do. On Binance Smart Chain, it's four or five cents, right? So you can you can play around and do your test sends and everything very easily, and it's one to one. Like um, the whole process is exactly the same on Binance Smart Chain and on on Ethereum. On Ethereum, like I'm very strategic. I typically speaking, I move larger amounts of funds around, so I don't really get destroyed by fees. But yeah, that's kind of how it starts. So that's kind of how it's going. I mean, it's not it's not. You know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it's bad. You know, I was spoiled. I mean, I was spoiled by one thousand percent APY. I mean, that's ten x your money in a year, right? So every month you can like, like the the amount of money that that was generating passively was just insane two or three months ago. Uh, now not so much, uh, but still at like thirty to seventy percent on my ETH is still pretty damn good, like pretty damn good. So if you want passive income, learn, um, but not financial advice. Yeah. Passive income, Tezos, Cardano. It's not not aggressive, not as much though. To be fair, our our cities, um, Mend Mend Mendes. Sorry for butchering your name. Um, you know, like there's a few, right? So um, prior to this whole yield farming situation, I was in Zcoin. 
um, uh, Z coin because my friend Ruben is there, uh, XZC, and you can run nodes, right? Run nodes. And in fact, I get roughly $24 uh, times, I think I have a few nodes. I'm not going to disclose number, but 24 per node every around two weeks or so. Um, let me see that. 24 to like 70 Right, depending on the price of XCC. So that was kind of what's happening. Um, it's passive, it's not that bad. I was also in VEAT, VEAT uh, and VX. Those were like kind of my my passive income ones. Um, what else is there? Mm -hmm. Oh wait, I, I need to turn this here. So yeah, that's, that's off the top of my head. Those were my passive income prior to DeFi yield farming, right? But nothing can put compare to DeFi yield farming. That's that's the that's what the point I'm trying to make. Like, like roughly speaking, like five to ten percent is great for staking, right? Oh, you have Alron to ERD, five to ten percent for staking. Um, you know, roughly around there. But like when DeFi came, you know, uh, and yield farming came, it was like um you know if you managed your risk well that that was like you know it was it was incomparable it was incomparable it's just that you have to manage it well and there was times when like things blew up and stuff and there's also pool tools which are a trap like there are so many traps in defo defi yield farming too avoid traps um yeah definitely avoid traps so there you go Anyways, um, that's pretty much it. We got stabilize your passive income. There's also stabilize. Um, they they survived. I just give shout outs to Happy Psyduck. Um, he's part of the box mining community. I want a big, big, big shout out. I should have done this ages ago. I give him a shout out. But um, Belize finance, finance. But so I just want to make sure the typing is. But he's generating okay. It's like he's around the 30, like stabilizes around 30% right now. I got into this, like I found out about this pretty late. I was just too overwhelmed, I guess, uh, with everything going on. But yeah, so this this will be your pool two. Um, generally speaking, I don't usually go into pool twos anymore. So with these APYs, it's insane, obviously. But with these ones, yeah. So I think something like um, SUSD is generating around 30%, which is not bad, so. My two cents there. My two cents. So yeah, big shout outs to Stabilize. He actually managed to fight off a DDoS attack yesterday. Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like people are kind of douchebags in the space. I don't know. Like people just attack websites and stuff. And anyways, he managed to deal with that. Um, and it's good. And it's good. JR Smith, avoid traps. Good general advice. Um, yeah, man. There's so many traps in crypto. It's um like definitely having the mentality of that you're playing among us. And like, you know, every, you know, I I, I said this before, right? Every 10 projects, there's two imposters, two fakes, but that's actually not the truth. Like someone po posted this comment, but like for every 10 projects, eight of them are imposters, two of them are probably real. So that's that's kind of the that's kind of the situation right now. So Anyways, um, that's it, guys. Um, thank you guys for coming on the stream. It was definitely an impromptu fun stream. I really enjoyed just talking to you guys. Um, super, super cool. It's lots of good questions, too, and it just actually inspired me to make more videos. Um, you guys know from my time schedule, like I kind of split my time between videos and calls and stuff. Um, but yeah, this week, mostly, I'm I'm starting to finish everything else. I'm actually going to go to Chimsha Trey next. Um, so going to do some meetups there as well. So it'll be super fun. And it'll be super cool. Um, uh, smart altcoins is Thunder or X nodes on vet. Which one better return? I have an X node. Um, so yeah, like, but that was from ages ago. So, you know, there you go. Um, X node is on top of a Thunder. So you get Thunder and X node, right? So, or, or it depends on how you're asking the question. But anyways, my two cents. Uh, oh yeah, VeChain was actually giving pretty okay stuff. Vet, vet, vet was okay. Vet was okay, but the prices are very volatile. I've, I just been, been saving up the the gas. Um, that was pretty good. Vet, vet X node, node. Yeah. Cool. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, also, just passive income. Like, yeah, just um, also if you guys are into Earths, Earths was doing some cool stuff as well. So there you go. 
Um, the real James says, are you Eve Maximus? No, I'm not Maximus by any means. I think Maximism actually just closes your eyes to what's happening. Um, I feel like uh, I want to actually make money here. <laughs> like, uh, it's weird, right? Because like some people fight for ideologies, right? Like, yeah. That doesn't make any sense, right? And not just that, but like if you close your eyes to everything, like I really love Eve, all right? Uh, there's a, so much so much innovation here. A lot of my assets are in Eve, but I'm not gonna be a maximalist, right? The same thing about Bitcoin. Like the moment I stopped thinking like a Bitcoin maximalist, that was the moment I took off. Like there was a phase right, um, back in my life where I was kind of like, when I started learning about crypto, I, I was very influenced by maximalists. And I even had a debate with Tone Vase, right? About maximalism. And to many, you would think that I lost, right? Because he's so, he's so well phrased in attacking the non um, maximalist argument. And he has so many debate skills, right? I think this is something that I kind of realized with Tone. Like, he's a very, very good speaker. Right, but he is hella wrong. Like he can turn, like I don't know, like like I wouldn't put him at the reverse indicator end of things, but like you just have to be very very careful what he says and then think clearly about it. And I think that's that's kind of cool. Uh, so, anyways, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for uh, watching. None of this is financial advice. I hope that's <laughs> abundantly clear. Uh, but it was a very enjoyable session. Really enjoy talking with you guys here. If you guys did enjoy today's stream, do to hit the like button. It does really help the channel. Uh, it's like these things really do help. Um, and like if you look at the YouTube things, right? Like this is what they tell YouTubers to do all the time, right? But I'm not always on YouTube. I'm always more like on the investment side. Like I have assets to manage and stuff, right? So, anyways, guys. But do that. Do 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 like the. Do the um, crypto stuff. Um, do the YouTube stuff. Smash up those likes. Um, come on, come on, um, come on Discord. I'll put that link up again. Um, yeah, and then we are good. So thank you guys so much for watching. See you. Guys.